Okay, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to Meet Your Future National Apprenticeships Week. So I'm Bronwyn and I'm part of the Bridge GM team here at Greater Manchester Combined Authority. So in 2019, we launched Meet Your Future so that young people just like yourselves can meet and connect with lots of different employers and experience different workplaces as well. Over the past 12 months, we've been speaking with young people right from across Greater Manchester, from the 10 different boroughs, to find out how you're feeling and how you'd like to be supported now and in the future. And we have developed a suite of information, resources and services that are there to help you. And you can really find these on GMAX. Um, I'll pop the link into the chat later, but many of you will all already be familiar with and if not, please do speak to your teachers about using GMAX. From this, we have also adapted Meet Your Future, um, reflecting what you have been telling us is important. And over this academic year, you can join sessions and chat with Greater Manchester and national employers about growth sectors, about different pathways and the array of career opportunities here in Greater Manchester. In this session, you'll hear from the NHS Careers Hub about apprenticeships in health and social care. And hopefully this session will really inspire you and show why you should be hopeful and optimistic for your future here in Greater Manchester. So throughout the session, there is a Q&A box. Um, please do make use of, of the Q&A and um, ask questions as we go. We'll have some time at the end to go through these. And um, I would now like to introduce Chloe, who will be taking you through apprenticeships in the health and social care sector. Fantastic, thank you, um, Bronwyn. Um, so I will um, just share my screen. Hopefully you can all um, see that okay. Um, so yes, I'm Chloe and I am from the Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Careers Hub. So, um, so what we um, do is we work with all of the trusts in Greater Manchester um, and social care organisations and primary care, so lots of different people, um, and we are here to be a central part of call for any kind of information that you need um, about careers within health and social care. Um, so we have um, a array of different events that you can join, um, you can also email us for more information, um, and I'm really here to support you with anything that you need um, around um, discovering and learning more about events within health and social care. So today we're going to go through some of the opportunities um, in terms of apprenticeships um, within the NHS um, and social care as well. So I hope that this will be really interesting for you and will kind of start you thinking about what some of the options might be for you um, in terms of um, the NHS and apprenticeships. So um, to begin with, one thing that I like to do at the beginning of my sessions is to get everyone thinking about what kind of jobs there are within um, health and social care, what sort of things um, are out there for you. So um, I have a question for you to begin with um, and I, what I'd like you to do is to take a guess as to how many roles you think there are within the NHS. So when we talk about roles we mean different types of jobs so that could be um, nurses, midwives, doctors, um, cleaners, um, there's lots of different people um, that may work with the NHS and what I'd like you to do is take a guess. So do you think um, in terms of how many roles there are within the NHS, do you think it's A, 350, B, 275 or C, 425? So if you want to pop into um, the chat or the Q&A um, your guess um, of what you think, whether it's A, B or C, for how many roles there are within the NHS and we'll see who gets it right. Great, so, um, yes, sir, sir. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so we've got a few C's, um, a couple of A's, a couple more C's. Everyone's going for C or A at the moment. Ah, fantastic. OK, just one more minute. OK, 
Okay, so we still got C's and A's there from them. Yeah, pretty much a couple of B's are coming through, but oh. C and A's are definitely <laughs> the majority. Exciting. OK, so um, I can reveal that within the NHS there are actually just over 350 jobs in the NHS. So well done to everyone who said A, and it is 350. And I can kind of guess why a lot of you said C, because um, you kind of think, well, there's a lot of jobs. I'll go for the biggest number. Um, so yeah, so well. You know, that is um, understandable. Um, but yeah, so there is around 350 or just over 350 jobs within the NHS. So that's a lot. And so when we think of the NHS or health and social care, we often think of clinical staff members. So I'm guessing if I was to, to say to you, quick fire, tell me a job within the NHS, you'll probably say doctor or nurse or midwife. You'll say something clinical, you'll say something that we all kind of know um, and that's fine because that's what most of us um, would say when it comes to um, jobs in the NHS. Um, however, there are just so many different roles um, that you can do within health and social care. So on the screen right now are some of those roles that you can do, some of the different um, opportunities that you have um, within this sector. Um, so we have um, up at the top there, allied health professionals. Um, so allied health professions are ones that you've probably all heard of. So um, I'm guessing everyone in the classroom has probably heard of a physiotherapist or um, a radiographer. Um, and these are all part of the allied health professions. There's quite a few different jobs that are listed as allied health professions and they're basically um, autonomous practitioners um, who mainly deal with a specific type of the body. So podiatrists deal with feet or they deal with a type of um, therapy or treatment. So physiotherapists or radi um, therapeutic radiographers. So they treat the body in a certain way using certain techniques. So that's allied health professions. Um, and again, probably not a role that you would instantly think of when you're thinking of the NHS, um, but they are a really key part of this system. Healthcare science um, is another area of the NHS. Um, and these are all people who work behind the scenes in labs um, to ensure that um, you know, we're doing research and they test all of your samples and things like that. So when we go see a doctor, we often think that it's the GP who's doing our diagnosis, when actually um, about 80% of diagnosis is delivered through healthcare science. So they do a lot of our diagnosis um, and support with our treatments. So although they're behind the scenes, not in contact with um, patients, they do a lot to, to support um, people in the NHS. Then we have nursing, which I'm sure you've all heard of before. Social care and all of these jobs all feed into social care as well. So staff often may work in a hospital and work in a social care setting and switch between the two. We have corporate staff and these are all people who are working behind the scenes. So the way that I think about it is all of these people up here, your allied health, your nurses, your social care staff, all support patients. And then your corporate staff support the staff to support the patients. So they make sure they're paid, they make sure they get, um, they make sure they're recruited into that role and that they're happy in that role in human resources. So that's what corporate staff do. And then we have maintenance and support as well, or estates and facilities, and they look after the buildings that look after the people that look after the patients. So maintenance and support are all the things within those buildings, um, you know, even down to your desk, down to the chairs, down to the laptops that we use, um, in the buildings, painting, electricity, um, air ventilation, it's all done by um, estates and facilities. And the reason why I'm starting with this is because when it comes to apprenticeships, we have them in all of these areas. So when you're thinking about oh, what can I do with the NHS in terms of apprentice apprenticeships, it's not just nursing apprenticeships, it's across the board. There's lots of different options that you can do in all these different areas. So I really kind of wanted to open your eyes a little bit and get you to start thinking about how you might be able to do an engineering apprenticeship with the NHS or um, a finance apprenticeship with the NHS. It's not just clinical staff and um, there is really something in there for everybody. 
So now on to apprenticeships. So um, the thing is with apprenticeships um, in the NHS is that we don't always advertise jobs as apprenticeships, which is quite um, annoying for a lot of people. Um, but what we often offer is training opportunities. So sometimes roles will be advertised as trainees or support workers, and these will often include an element of an apprenticeship. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of um, um, defining an apprenticeship here as anything that has both work experience and studying. And there's quite a few roles that have that, that like I said, are maybe labelled as apprenticeships. And there is quite a few different alternative routes into the NHS. So just to kind of go through some of these, um, and we only have 15 minutes, so this is all like a real run through really quickly. Um, but what I can do is I can pop in the chat some links to some different um, resources and things that may help um, with this. And um, we also have some more sessions on all of this stuff if you want to kind of find out a little bit more. So um, nursing associates is a new role that's within the NHS that is um, a slightly, they're kind of bridging the gap between a healthcare assistant and a nurse. So they're kind of in the middle there. Um, and you can train as an apprentice to be a nursing associate through a foundation degree. So that's one role where you might want to kind of get into and that is an alternative way to be a nurse without um, going straight to university. Now, after you've done your nursing associate training, you can then upskill to become a nurse. Allied Health, and we spoke about those before, physiotherapists, occupational therapists. There are some um, degree apprentices popping up within these areas. Um, often you can access these through being a um, Allied Health support worker or assistant. Um, they won't be called Allied Health support workers, but they'll be called assistants. They'll be called like physiotherapist, assistant, occupational therapist, assistant. Um, and they're often offering degree apprenticeships to people within these roles um, to then again upskill and become um, apprentices. So um, it is a way to get into these kind of options. We also have the um, NWAS, which stands for Northwest Ambulance Service. And I've seen there's uh, someone in the chat asking how do you what do you do to become um, a paramedic apprentice? At the moment there isn't a paramedic apprenticeship for people coming outside into Northwest Ambulance Service, um, but there are some options for you to get into Northwest Ambulance Service and then once you're in those roles doing an apprenticeship, you then may off be offered an opportunity to upskill to be a paramedic. So it's not a direct route into that kind of role, but if you start at these other roles, you then may get offered that level. Um, so in NWAS we have um, technical support workers and they're people who um, go with the paramedic out into the field. They're they're basically, it's kind of like a nursing associate. They're like a paramedic, but not quite a paramedic. Um, and you can also be um, a support worker, a call handler um, within NWAS as well. And that is also an apprenticeship. In terms of non-clinical opportunities, so there's lots of roles within medical sciences that you can do to gain um, apprenticeship, um, to gain um, an upskill to be an apprentice in that area. There's also lots of opportunities in the states and facilities to do things like engineering apprenticeships. And within corporate healthcare, there's lots of opportunity there to upskill um, and progress through corporate um, healthcare to um, do lots of different kinds of apprenticeships. So I feel like that was quite a quick run through. In terms of finding out these opportunities, the best place to look is NHS Jobs. Sometimes you can find out a little bit more information on the training provider websites such as UCAS, but I'd really recommend starting your search on the NHS Jobs website. So that was really quick um, and I feel like there's probably lots of questions there, but I hope it's mainly got you starting to think about some of the different roles that you can do in the NHS and the fact that it's not just those clinical areas, there's lots of other areas as well. Um, so I don't know if we've got any time for questions, but um, if anyone does have anything they want to ask, I'm more than happy to answer it. Um, and I can also put some links in the chat box to where you can find out a little bit more information. I will, we are at quarter two, Chloe, um, but I'll give everyone one minute um, if they've got any burning questions and we'll go through a couple of them um, if we can. I know some of you will have to leave now, um, but that was, that was fantastic. Thank you, Chloe. I certainly didn't know about all the different, um, the different apprenticeship opportunities. Um, oh, someone has asked, um, I've just published it now, 
are there any apprenticeships for GPs? Um, um, so there isn't really much option, much option there to, be, to do an apprenticeship to be a GP. Um, yeah, the main route into still medicine is going to university um, and studying those medical degrees for, for five years. Um, there is routes, like I said, into nursing through the nursing associate role. And the thing that people don't often know about nursing is that you can do, once you're a nurse, you can work your way up. So, you know, often nurses can do extra qualifications to prescribe. They can do extra qualifications to do quite a lot of stuff that GPs and doctors do and um, while still having that role as a nurse. So um, what I think is good for you to consider is where you're at at the moment, what kind of skills, qualifications you have. Is being a GP or a doctor realistic in terms of where you're at at that moment? And then thinking about why you want to be a GP, is that something that you're looking for in that job? And can that be fulfilled by any other job within the NHS? Because there's lots of routes for progression once you're in those roles. Fantastic. And we've got um, another question that's come through. What is an art therapist? That's a great question. So um, an art therapist um, basically uses art and drawings to help people express their emotions. So, for example, you might work with children um, and you might get them to draw pictures um, about how they're feeling and you'll use that to kind of interpret what sort of their thoughts and feelings are. Um, and you also may use art to to help people. Um, so, you know, you might help people um, with dementia, think back about what they remember and um, help them kind of um, deal with their emotions and things. So um, there's also music therapists and drama therapists as well, which do a similar kind of thing, but obviously with different disciplines of art. Fabulous. Um, there is um, the one final question just about Questions about what's the average starting salary for a role such as a midwife, um, but perhaps it's good to talk about apprenticeships in general and the average starting salary for apprenticeships in the NHS. Yeah, so um, in terms of um, starting salaries, what I can do is I can pop in the chat box um, the link to our Agenda for Change website. And so um, when you're looking at um, pay within the NHS, it's all done through this Agenda for Change and there's different bands. So, for example, your nurse and your midwives, when they've gone to university traditionally and then gone into the NHS, they'll start about a band five. The nursing associate role um, starts at a band three when they're training, so that's around um, 20,000 just over, um, and that's while they're training. Once they're qualified, they're a band four, which is 22,000 or just over, um, and then if they were to upskill to be a nurse, then they'd be on a band five. Um, and again, once you're in nursing, you can keep upskilling and training and move all the way through the bands, um, but on that link, there's quite some quite good examples as to what the band is, how much they would be paid and who would be doing that kind of role. So you can get a sense of what kind of people would be paid. Perfect. Um, that is great. Thank you, Chloe. So I think if we leave it. Yeah. There, um, yeah. No I've popped in the chat box um, a link to our um, other events that we're doing if you want to find out more information and I can also pop into the chat um, if you want to get in touch with us our um, contact information is on that link as well so if you have any other kind of burning questions feel free to drop us an email. Brilliant okay thank you so much Chloe and thank you for your time today and thank you to everyone in our audience as well um, for joining hopefully you did find it really interesting insightful and inspiring um, so you can keep up to date with all things meet your future at GMAX um, you can find that link on the screen now and I've also just popping into the chat now um, a link for a feedback form so if you can go and take a look at this um, and send us any feedback as well from the session today that'd be fantastic um, but again thank you for joining us and have a fantastic rest of your day thanks everyone